Using type in a Photoshop document is a real straightforward process. We'll be working with type layers. Let's look at our layers over here. And I'll scroll down a little bit. Notice all these layers here have a big T on it. These are type layers. You see what we have here. We have, I'm just going to float this panel for a second. And let's get this out of the way. We have September 2010 right there. That's one layer. You can see it. I'll just hide and show that. The word magazine is on its own layer right there. And then wind and sail is on its own layer right at the top. Now to put in a layer, a type layer, to add some type, I'm just going to hide these layers. And I'll come down here to layer 1. This layer 1 is simply a picture right there. It's a picture of that ship. And layer 3 has just a gradient on it in behind that picture. So I'll go to the layer right below where I want the type to be. I'll choose a type color. Click in here. I think I'll just choose kind of a, a darkish blue. Somewhere like that. Choose OK. That sets our type color. We then go to the type tool right here. Notice that your foreground color here is now copied up to the type color right there. Once you have this set, if you need to change your type color, you change it up here in the options panel. And then just click into your document and it gives you a new type layer just like that and a little insertion point. You can tell the size of the type by that blinking where that dot is right there. That is the baseline for your letters. The line above is your capital height and the line below is your descender height. Let's go ahead and just type in wind and sail. Let me just fix that capital. There we go. Notice how this came in center. That's because we have center alignment set right here. I'm going to set this over to left align. And I'll pull that down a little bit. So this is just brought in with the default typeface. Wind and sail. Let's make a slight change right here. I'm going to select this type. So you can change and edit your type just by selecting it like that. And I'll change this and to the ampersand sign. That's a shift 7 gives me the ampersand sign just like that. So to change your text, just select it and then type. Now if you go off to a different layer up here, or so I'll come down here to our photo layer. If I go back to my type tool and I want to edit on this layer, if I just come right over the text and click into the text, it automatically takes me back to that layer. So it's easy to get back to the layer. Double click and you get one word like that, three clicks, and you get the whole sentence in there. And you then can come in and make changes. Let's say I wanted to have a different typeface in here. I can do that up here. I can change my typeface from the drop down list. If the typeface has different settings, let's go here to Arial. And we have narrow, regular, italic, bold, and bold italic as options in here, or as styles on this typeface. I can change it right there from that drop down list. We can change the size of the type here. Notice as I roll over the T, I get this little finger thing. I mentioned this before in one of our previous documents that a lot of areas in Photoshop allow you to roll over the name of the control and adjust the size by scrolling over the name. Now in here you can actually scroll and see the size change right as you're working with it. It's a real nice feature. You don't have to pick any specific size. You can type anything you want up here, including decimal points. Let me just back up here and put a 0.5. So you can do half points as well, although I don't really recommend doing that. But you can do that if you want. You can be real specific on that. You can adjust the anti-aliasing in here, which is the edge quality. None and it has no anti-aliasing at all. Sharp and crisp will tend to keep the edges of the letters pretty sharp, but it softens them up just a little bit, and then these tend to soften the edges up even more. This is more useful on smaller type than it is on larger type. On larger type, it's not as useful. Let's go ahead and find now a decent typeface for this. I'm just going to look at my list, and I'll try a few things. Here's one called Black Adder. Not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. And just 
Looking down my list, here's a brush script. That's not too bad either. And this is how I did the type up here, actually, for Wind and Sail. Here I simply went through and tried different typefaces looking at my samples. And I picked the ones that kind of felt like they would look okay until I found one that I liked. And you can see right there, that's actually what I used. A little different size, but what I used was this one, the Monotype Corsiva. I also made this a little smaller size just to make it look a little more interesting, so I brought that size down. Let's take a look at the type that I did use here. We can see our settings. In here, this is set at 120 point right there. The ampersand is set at 72 point and then sail again at 120 point. So adding type is simply a matter of clicking onto your image with the text tool and it will then give you a new text box. If you click over existing type, it takes you to that type layer right there and then double click selects a word, triple click selects a whole sentence, and once it's selected you can then change any of the settings up here inside of the options panel.